reason to be thankful to our father so even as we have gathered i would like to encourage you and myself let's turn to him please let us speak to our father with thanksgiving and commit ourselves to him that he may lead us and teach us and glorify himself in us may the joy of the lord fill our hearts for the lord desires that we be filled with his joy thank you father thank you most high god Amazing King, we give you glory. Who is there like you, O Lord of hosts? You are exalted forever. And we are delighted. We are blessed to belong to you. Daddy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the name. Thank you, O God, for our belonging to you, to this family. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. And tonight, O Lord of hosts, teach us as you will. Teach us and grant us understanding that we might understand and our lives will be changed. Yes, Lord, have your own way fully in the name of Jesus. We entrust ourselves to you. We know that we hear you. And so tonight, each ear is a listening ear, is a hearing ear, is each heart is an understanding heart in Jesus' name. And every work of darkness concerning this work in the name of Jesus, I cancel it. And I block every arrow of darkness in the name of Jesus. I bind every demonic force that is assigned to distract to mess up, to, to attend to this in any way. In the name of Jesus, let the power of God fill this place. Let the spirit of God freely teach his children. Let the glory of God be seen. Let the joy of the Lord fill the hearts of his daughters and our households. Thank you, Father, for you are good. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, dear sisters, and a warm welcome to tonight, uh, the Lord's Prayer School. The Lord has been teaching us over time. Every week he adds something, opens our understanding to the reality of prayer so that we will be helped. You know, we will be helped. We will be helped. There is nothing as miserable as powerless prayer. Ah. Like, your prayer doesn't make a difference to anything. Like, seriously? 
then what's the use? You know, that I, I ponder sometimes that if, look, okay. Remember what Martha said to Jesus when Jesus came after Lazarus had died and they had that conversation. One of the things that Martha said to Jesus is that even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give it to you. Hey, where does she get that assurance from? How did she arrive at that confidence? How? Now, how about you and me? Okay. If that was said of Jesus, what else should be said about you and about me? Look at it in John eleven twenty two, if you can, please. And I do encourage us to actually open our eyes and open our Bibles. It helps us. We are blessed by the word of God. Mm. We can look at it in John chapter 11. In fact, if you like, you can read from verse 21. 21 and 22. So John eleven twenty one. 21. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, which is true, right? Now look at what she says in verse 22. But even now, even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Whatever you ask from God, God will give you. So do you see the confidence? The confidence Martha is expressing, she's not talking about herself that, oh, whatever I ask from God. But she says, even now I know you, I know that you ask for you, whatever you ask of God, he'll give you. Now, you and I are walking around in families. You and I are, you know, living and growing and everything. If you yourself cannot even tell yourself that I know that whatever I ask of God, he will give me, you see, then it's, it's, it's quite unlikely maybe by grace, that somebody will observe that you have an effective prayer life, that whatever you ask of God, he gives you. And yet you and I are the ones who walk in the word, aren't we? Are we not the ones that he said to us that, and I'm going to the father and whatever you ask in my name, I will do it for you. Are we not the ones he was talking to? Are we not the ones he was talking to when he says that up till this time you have asked nothing, but I'm telling you ask and you will receive so that your joy will be full. Is that not what he said? Did he not say ask and you shall receive? Seek, you will find, knock, the door will be open to you. Then he continues by saying, whoever asks receives. Is, it, does it apply to you? Are you part of whoever or you, you, you are outside of whoever? And yet you and I may have our experiences to testify to the fact that, yes, he said that whoever has received, but not in my case. Me, when I ask, I may or may not receive. What is that? What kind of testimony is this? That, that blatantly and, and, and without shame challenges the truth of the word of God. What testimony is this? That speaks of God as a liar. What testimony is this? How could my life be such that it testifies that the word of God is, is lying? It's lying. That whatever I ask, I don't receive. He said, this is the confidence that I should have. Confidence. What is confidence? This is the confidence I have in, in him. That I know that if I ask him anything according to his will, he hears me. And if I know that he hears me, whatever I ask, then I know that I have those requests that I made, made from him. Is that not the scripture? So should I not be walking in the space where my children will say to me, my husband will say to me, I will say to myself, the people that I touch will say to, to me that I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give you. 
for my testimony, their testimony must agree with that of the word of God. You see, anything that is different from that, it means that I'm missing the points. I'm missing something somewhere. And the Lord has been teaching us because there's a lot that we, we need to know. He, he deals with that at us at our level, just like you see, you when you're dealing with your six month old baby and that baby is, you know, uh, having to wear diapers and things, it's not a problem. You are very happy. You are okay buying the diapers, whatever you need to buy. You are fine. That's, that's the stage. You see, you don't judge them. You don't say, but you are, you are a human being, but still you are wearing diapers. I, very few of us will say that, right? But when that child is seven years old and there is a diaper requirement, you will be rushing around going to the hospital. Why? Because you, at that stage, it's not a diaper issue at all. You see, you deal with each one according to their level. At that seven years old, you are not too surprised if they are not able to, you know, run a home. It's not a problem. You are not expecting them to run a home. But wherever it is that their age is, the stage, you know, the, they should be able to deliver according to the stage thereabouts. You see what I mean? In the same way, God has been working with us. When I didn't know anything, I knew zero. He was still my father and he was very merciful and he was dealing with, you know, this, this girl there, oh, Charlie, diaper issues. Oh, you know, uh-huh. Then as I'm growing, there, there comes a time when the same request that I made before, in the same manner, with the same understanding, I won't get an answer. Why? I've grown past the diaper issue. He has taught me other things that by now I should be applying. But if I don't apply them, then he will be looking at me and say, no, girl, grow up. Girl, grow up. I've taught you this. I told you that if you stand praying, for, uh, forgive. Or I've told you that when you, 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 whatever you ask for, believe you have received it. So you can't be standing here and pretending you you don't know that you should believe you have received it then you are doing run about run about and you expect me to deliver it to you no my daughter please i've taught you grow up use what i've taught you at your level maybe there is more that i'll teach you later but i've not taught you yet so i don't have a problem with you for what i've not taught you but the one that you should know by now dear oh i'm not going to be buying pampers at seven years old you see so god is asking us his word is in our hands. These things he's teaching us. If you want to know, he, he will teach you. He will teach me. That's what he's doing. When we can learn it from the word. Don't you desire that your prayers should always be answered? Don't you desire that that thing that he said, it should be true for you? You don't like it. I know you like it. Me too, I like it. You see? So please hunger after that from the bible when you are reading your bible open your eyes and see and let the lord teach you teach me for this is where he wants us to walk that as for me i know that whatever i ask of my father he'll give me and i know people who are working in that space like uh, some my sister told me she said now i have to be careful what i ask for because whatever i ask i get why not because that's why he gave us the, the scriptures. If he didn't want us to get, what's the, what's the whole, after all, God, we can't intimidate him. What's the rush to come and tell us that, ask and you shall receive? Who is, who is, who is forcing him? You see? So he, he, it's not by force. Out of his free will, he came to say nobody forced him. And he doesn't lie to. So it means that's what he wants us to walk in. That's where he wants us to walk. Now, for this reason, let me challenge you. Do you notice that the, from time to time, there are issues, there are things that come up. Then you feel as if you need to call on the entire church, entire assembly. Oh, war room. Everyone, please pray for me. I'm going for an interview. Oh, sister. Is it that God is counting the social media you know, the number of likes. So the more the likes, that's the prayer that he answers first or what? No, sis, surely we must grow in our confidence before our father. Oh, you see, now you will be growing and I'll be growing to a place where the Lord 
has to prompt you or prompt me that as for this one, send it to the entire church. Bring the elders and the church and everything. Let them all pray. God has to prompt me because otherwise, I don't see any, any scripture that tells me that, oh, there is these areas, like when you are going for an interview and it's a big job, that one, you need five Christians. Do, 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 you, do you have anything like that? Oh, when it's a serious disease, that one, you need 12 Christians. And then maybe if it is a child, you know, that they, they are not going well, you need war room, you need fire. Uh -huh. Then this one too, you need a, you need a hundred people. Look, find a, a page where there are three million people. Eh? This prayer topic, it will need three million women praying. Sis, there's nothing like that. He said the Prayer of the righteous man, not men. Man, one man. He said Elijah was just like you. One man, one, 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 one. It takes one. It just takes one. It just takes one who knows their God. It just takes one who knows how to pray. Are you saying you don't know how to pray? Why must fear cause you to run? Hey, help me, oh, help me, help me, help me pray, oh, help me pray, oh, hey, my daughter is uh, jumping up and down here, please, please, can, can all of you gather around me and let us pray? Ah, is it not the same Jesus who is living inside of you? Is it not the same Bible that the, all of you people are going to use to pray that, that you, you hold? Is it Bible increases in power according to the number of human beings that are praying? No. God wants you and me to grow in the knowledge, in the confidence of our place with him. Like you know your place with God. And that place, it doesn't come by, you know, I feel good, I feel big, I feel mature, I feel like a baby, whatever. That's not where it comes. It's not a feeling matter. It's by the word. Are you ready to believe what is written? Are you ready to follow what he has written? Just believe what he has written and act on it. Is that not the same way you came to salvation? You believed what was written, you acted on it, and you became saved. It wasn't a matter of anything else. The rest of it is all like that. You believe, you act, it is yours. Believe, act, it is yours. Every part of the word of God, every part of the provision of God is like that. He speaks the word, you, you see it, you receive it, you believe it, and you accept it, you act on it. It is yours. That's it. Every part. So we cannot make it like, oh, as for salvation, I can stay in my room and be saved. But you cannot stay in your room and, and deal with your matter and ask and receive. You can't. Oh, no. No, 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 no. no. And you know, he's not asking us for long stories so he's not asking us to for formula you see let me tell you something so you you notice that for some of us we've been talking plenty what i mean by that is that maybe we lead one thing or the other we sing here there maybe something something whatever whatever okay and then uh, whether it is we are also growing i don't know okay by variety of factors, let's say our voices have, have tuned themselves in a particular way. It has come to pass that because many of the people who lead in prayer and so on and so forth have used their voices extensively, there's a certain tone of voice that when you hear that tone praying, you think that that is equal to power. So when you hear me talking to my God, because it sounds like a something, something year old who has been uh, talking plenty, it sounds powerful. But that's not where the power is. It's not by virtue of voice tone. Ah, it cannot be. You see, so that you put your trust in it that, oh, when I came, in fact, I asked sister so-so and so to pray. You know that woman, hey, Charlie, when she start praying, eh, hey, Charlie, you can see even the demon start to run. Demon does not fear the, the tone of a human voice. No, nothing, nothing. Your soft voice that believes in the word of God does the work effectively. Did the Bible 
mention anything about how powerful Elijah's voice appeared to be by the time he was praying for the rain to stop. Hey, that one there then, Charlie, some of us, maybe I don't know whether my voice is at the right level yet. Do you understand what the Lord is talking to us about this evening? He says, know your place. Grow in confidence. He delights to answer your specific prayer. You by yourself can make great power available if you will believe what the word of God has said. If you will stand on the word of God, you can make mighty power available. For Elijah was a man like you. But you see, let me tell you something. He did not say that Elijah was a man like you. He said Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. Remember something. Jesus Christ told you and me something. He said that of all the men born of woman, there is none greater than John the Baptist. In fact, it is very ideal that you look at it for yourself. Right? And we will find that in Matthew eleven eleven. Please, if you don't mind, in fact, I encourage you to. Let's, let's just look at it so we can see with our, our two eyes or our four eyes. Please, Matthew eleven eleven. He said, truly. And you know, Jesus, Nankasano, he doesn't lie. So when he begins the thing with truly, I don't even know what he wants to say. Just say, you understand? Hey, truly, I'm telling you something. That among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Which means Elijah, uh, Abraham, uh, Melchizedek, uh, the human version. Uh, like once you were born of one for Melchizedek, he has no genealogy. So let me remove him from that link, that, that list. David, Solomon, I don't know who you want to list, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, because this is what Jesus is saying. He said, unless they were not born by women, any that were born by men, they are in a different category. But if you pass through a woman and you came, then that one, the John the Baptist, there's none that went past John the Baptist level. None greater than, maybe they could be as great as him, I don't know. But none greater than John the Baptist. Look at how he continues it. So this Elijah you are talking about, eh? look at it. He says, yet, and yet, and yet, and yet, and yet, the one who is the least, does that qualify you? The one who is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The one who is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist, which makes us, even the least of us, greater than the prophets in the rankings of God. Do you understand? Now, this is the God that you stand before as his daughter. And he tells you that Elijah, even Elijah, he prayed and over a whole nation, three years, no rain. You know, Elijah knew God. Elijah knew the principles to use. Elijah activated the provisions of, of the covenant that God had made with Israel. That when they walk a certain way, the, one of the punishments available will be lack of rain. Elijah connected to the purposes of God at that time, brought that to pass. Now, he said that there will be no rain until I say so. Sister. Elijah was one man, and the Holy Spirit tells you that the prayer of the righteous man, the fervent prayer, this thing that you are talking about, you desire it so greatly. You are, you are passionate about it. Don't waste your time looking for Tom, Dick, Harry, Ajua, Fulani, and, 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 and uh, Hadassah to join your prayer wagon before you think that God hears you. 
You yourself go to your father because the power is not the number of human beings. The power is the God that you are talking to and the word that you are basing your, your, your supplications on and your understanding of the word. That's where it is from. You and I can no longer live in that place where we look up to another person. Oh, sister, see me, see she's great, she's mighty. As for they, they are close to God. Ah, is it not the same Jesus, the same blood? Yes, some have certainly uh, been taught more than we have been taught. But Charlie, ask and you shall receive it yet. Ask for ask and you shall receive. It applies to the whole house. We have been asking and receiving since we were babies, but it's just that we have passed the diaper stage. So as we are walking in the places where we are not supposed to walk, pretending we are still in diapers when we are now six years old and in class one, the father too, he doesn't cuddle his children for too long. So at their appointed time, he stops buying the diapers for us. That's the issue. So he's talking to you and telling you that, hey, my daughter, there is power available in you. There is power in your spirit. There's power in your mouth. There's power if you will believe what I have said. So by now, rise up to your place. This is the confidence that you should have. You personally, you personally, you personally, that if you ask him anything according to his will, he hears you, you. And if you know that he hears you, whatever it is that you ask, sister, you should know that you have the, the request that you have made of him. You personally. Unless and until the Holy Spirit stirs it up in your spirit that ask for this prayer, please bring the whole church. Because the Holy Spirit is the grand uh, conductor of the orchestra of God, the orchestra of prayer. So very much he can stare me and say that, no, this prayer topic, lead it here. That prayer topic, when you are praying this way, add it to the group, something, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the default is that I pray. And when I pray, I should receive it. So over the last week or two, he has, uh, should I even say week or two? We have been learning various things. Last couple of weeks, he's talked to us about believing and forgiving so that we may know. Hmm? He's removing the diapers. The thing is, he now he's removed the diapers already. So the thing we should know, okay, and, and that's why we are failing in some areas. When you became a believer, anything you ask, it came. Anything you ask, you received. Those days, you did not know much, and God agreed. But now he does not agree anymore. He does not agree anymore. So we have to rise up and take him at his word and stop trying to behave as if we can never be anything more than a baby. Surely, the seed, the incorruptible seed of God is in us. Surely, that is power. You see? So, if you have missed the previous sessions for one reason or the other, I will strongly encourage you, please, take your time. Go through them one at a time. Sis, because these are things we need to know. Some we know. Some he gives us deeper insights as he's teaching us. Some too we don't know he's adding, but we can see the thing all oh, is in the Bible. And because you and I own Bibles, we can't pretend that the thing is far away. You know, this, this, uh, this information is in the archives in the Oxford University. And Lord, you know, I've always been in the University of Ghana. You know that you cannot claim it. The thing is on your phone. The phone too is with you all the time. The thing is in your bag. The thing too is, is on your whatever bed stand, whatever it is, wherever you want, you have Bible all over the place. We can't even pretend. So open the thing and read. So listen to the sessions and listen to the Holy Spirit as you are listening. And he will show you even outside of the sessions more things that he wants to emphasize for you in particular so that he can bring you and me into that place where your testimony supports the word of God. He wants me to come into that place where my testimony supports the word of God, not where my testimony is the one that they use to prove that the word of God is not true. 
you see. Then they bring my testimony. They say that, oh, you know, uh, yes, the Bible has said that about me. I know a certain lady, a sister Faye. She cried. You know, she was like this. She was like that. She cried. She said she had been waiting on the Lord for this. She has been trusting him and, and this, this, this. It never came. It never came till she died. That's not my life. That is not my life. I don't know about somebody else's life and details. And I don't need to know. I'm not called to manage their life. But as for this, my life, it must testify that God is true. This, my own life, whoa. It must testify that God's word, every detail of it is true. You have that choice concerning your personal life as well. You cannot account for why Uncle Osi may see sister so-and-so, auntie so-and-so appeared to believe God. He and God can sort that matter out. Why do I add it to my troubles? I don't need it. God can deal with that matter. He's a big boy. He can sort it out. But this your life. What will your story be? You, what will your story be? Will your life testify? Will you be able to lift up testimony after testimony? That proves that it's true. The word of God says that if you do it this way, it works. I can tell you, my sister, look, I did it. Look, uh, this was my problem. I moved it from here to there. I changed this. I changed that because the word of God said this and that. And when I came to him, I asked him, and then this is how it worked, blah, blah, blah. So it's true. The word of God, what he says is true. Pa. That is how my life should be. That's how your life should be. If it is not like that, then I desire it to change because your life, pa, it cannot be, it cannot be Satan's, Satan's advertisement, Satan's billboard. Hey, God is a liar. Hey, it's printed on your life. For what? It cannot be. So, what does it take to walk in that place? Little, little things. He said, don't be impressed by voices. Don't be impressed by long prayers. The vocabulary. Don't be impressed. Look, I hear the heart. Look, there are simple prayers. He said, just talk to me. I'm your father. Just talk to me. You see, you, you talk to me based on my word. You should know my will. And just tell father. Father, you know, just talk to me based on my will. That's all. That's all. Let's add this element that the Lord has been highlighting for me. I think this week. Have you seen John 4.23? Check. John 4.23. Have you seen it? John chapter 4, verse 23. He said that, but the, the hour is coming. And it's now here. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the father is seeking such people to worship him. <clears throat> God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Those who have a relationship with God must be walking in spirit and truth. From your spirit, in the spirit, and in the word, in the truth. That's the way that the, the flow, the space, the environment between you and God, me and God, that's where it's supposed to be. So, look at Psalm 37 verse 4. One thing that I would point out to you is that many times when, I know you know it, when the Bible says your heart, you know he's not talking about the one that is pumping the blood. You know that, right? It's not a matter of the one pumping the blood. 
not at all. He's talking about your core, your spirit, my core, my spirit. Psalm 37, verse 4. He says that, delight yourself in the Lord. And he will, not he may, but he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. Okay. And there is more. But he's emphasized something for me. He will give you the desires of your heart. How do you compare this with Matthew 6, 33? He says, this one says, delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. Have you seen Matthew 6, 33? He said that, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Delight yourself in the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Delight yourself in the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the desires of your heart will be given to you. And the things that you need will be given to you, be added to you. So what was he saying? He said that sometimes, in actual fact, in prayer, some of us, have we have a double double tongue we are double minded of a sort one of the ways that this sometimes manifests is the desire of your heart for example the desire of your heart let's say it's for i don't know which example you want to give let's say the desire of your heart is to have five children. That's the desire of your heart. But due to maybe fear, maybe something, something, I don't know. You know, sometimes emotions can come and do some whatever. Sometimes your heart will beat two or three times and you, you feel like you, you can't even, hey, how can you ask for five? You cry one pool, you know. So how can you ask for five children? So you come to God and say, Father, please, just give me one. Father, please, one child, one, one. All I ask, all I ask, all I ask is that if you will just give me one, that's all. Even if that one I will not have anymore, it's okay. Just give me one, Father. I have actually also heard people say, that even if I get pregnant and I miscarry, Seth, I, I like it. Hey, are you sure? Are you really sure? You see, the desire of the heart is five children, but the articulation, the prayer uttered is, you give me one. If after one, it's okay. You won't give me any. And why? Why do we sometimes have that disconnect between the heart desire and the prayer you utter? So whether you are lying by that prayer or you are pretending, I cannot even explain the matter, but you, you, you and God can figure that one out. It's, I can't tell it, you see. But one of the things that often blocks us in that space is that one, we do not hear our spirits. Like you don't pay attention to the desires of your heart. Sometimes, not always. There are times. There are also times where you are afraid. You, you, you are being given some, I don't know, suggestions to say that is too big. You... It, it is not, you are not qualified. You are not worthy. Um, you, should, you should tone down. How can you ask for five? Well, at least, you know, there are also people who don't have. Ask for one. You know, there are many things that 
go into that space where now you start crying for one when your desire is for five. If your desire is for one, your desire is for one. I hope you get me. Uh -huh. If your desire is for one, is for one. But I'm talking about a situation where in your heart, the desire is for five in this example. And yet because of fear, because of doubt, because of unbelief, because of inferiority, a sense of unworthiness, because of, of a lack of knowledge of the goodness and the abundance of God. Between your heart, your mind, and your mouth, you, you, you alter the figures, you shift the topic, and it becomes one where your heart is crying for five. Tonight is somebody's conversation. Father says that, look at the book of Luke, the gospel according to Luke, chapter one, and look at from verse 73. Luke one. This is the oath, eh? This is the oath. You know what an oath is? This is the oath. God swore to do this thing. Luke 1, 73. And 74. You see, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, and you and I know that our father Abraham, we too, we are, we can say our father Abraham, to grant us, this is the oath, that he will grant us that we, the Abraham's sons, Abraham's children, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him. How? Without fear. Totally without fear. He said he's looking for those who worship him in spirit and in truth, minus fear. Without fear, in holiness, righteousness before him all our days. All our days, without fear. This is the oath. This is what God is determined to do. He has sworn to do this. That's why he's been telling us, fear not. Have no fear. Fear not. As for fear, it's not part of you. This house, fear. No, not in any shape, shade, or form. No, no fear. Anything you do based on fear, please, throw the fear out and rather check what God has said concerning the matter and act based on that, not on what you are afraid will happen or what you are afraid will not happen. For anything that we do outside of faith is a sin. Anyhow you operate on fear and those things, you are just sinning, keke. Just sinning freely, successfully. So that, let's say it is fear. Let's say it is worry. Let's say it's the doubt or unbelief, something, whatever it is. But now, you are, your eye is not single. Your eye is not single. Your heart is calling out to God, five children, five children. Your mouth says, one child is okay, Lord. One child is okay, Lord. Can you bring unity between your members? Can you bring unity between your members? But remember God's promise. He said, if you delight yourself in me, eh, and don't forget that condition. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may read it and then you kind of shave off the condition and then you, are, you want to land on the promise. You see, just like he says that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right. You read the seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added unto you. Where is there all these things? So let's start from seek ye first. Uh -huh. So this one to let's start from delight yourself. So now you are delighting yourself in the Lord. In the Lord. In the word, in prayer, in the Lord's presence, in worship, in the things of God, in loving him, in obedience, in submission. And he will give you the desires, not of your mouth, not of your mind, but of your heart. So that promise is there and you have a contradicting proclamation from your mind and your mouth. So... One of these days, you could actually sit down on whichever matters that you pray about and, and look at the desire of your heart and bring it into alignment. You are praying and you are believing God. You, I mean, your heart desires that your entire family comes to God. But when you look at the dynamics, 
your mouth says that, oh, Lord, you let even the children, the children, as for the adults, you know, they, you know, they are so whatever, the, the, the children, Lord, I pray for future generations. But your heart is yearning that even the grandfather and the grandmother and the uncles and the aunties will all call upon the name of the Lord. If you can come to alignment, it will be helpful. If you can come to a place where you hear your heart, you hear your spirit, and you, you bring your mind and mouth in alignment with it based on the word of God, it will be a blessing. Now, remember that your spirit is born of God. He told us himself many times in the scriptures, and you see it in John chapter 3, 5, and 6. You see it in other scriptures. He says, whatever is born of God, that's not sin, cannot sin. Actually, he's given us the Holy Spirit in our spirits. The Holy Spirit dwells in my spirit, and my spirit is the candle of the Lord. I like my spirit because my spirit is born of God, and my spirit is incorruptible, you see. So if I can, if I can, Give more room and, and hear my spirit more and do according to the spirit. The relationship between me and God will be my spirit to God. So my spirit may pass the message through my mouth by all means, but it's cool. It's my spirit to God. This is part of the reason why when he showed us that first Corinthians 14 4 where he says that when you pray in the spirit right you build your spirit up it has been a blessing to us why because you see my spirit I want the voice of my spirit to be stronger so that I will walk in spirit you see, I don't want the voice of my flesh to be so loud. The voice of my mind. There are so many uncountable times when the Lord has spoken to me through my spirit. It comes like a thought. Then my mind will quickly counteract it like it's an ordinary thought. Then my mind will respond to that thought as, oh, Debbie, Debbie, no, this one, da, 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 da. Only to find out in a couple of steps, a few minutes, an hour, a day or so later that, ah, Lord, ah, why was that you? I, 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 I thought came to me that I should uh, go and apologize. Or the thought came to me that I should call this person. I thought came, uh -huh. but I responded. I said that, listen, that your mind said, and your mind is, that the mind is loud, you see. So you hardly, you are able to stamp out the voice of your spirit more. Say, so, no, but when you pray in the spirit, your spirit toughens, like the muscles are being built up. It enables you to override your mind a lot easier. That's, that's what is happening. And it is the Holy Spirit who does that strengthening within us. So he's saying to us that, Look, don't come, or when you talk to me, me, I can see your heart. Oh. I said, I don't look like man looks. I can see your heart. I can see what you are exactly yearning for. So for those of us where in my heart of hearts, I am yearning for evil to befall the other person sometimes you because of something like you want to be proved right because you want to be proved right you are yearning for some evil to befall i don't know a friend an auntie even sometimes a husband so that you say i told you so you might not even say it with your mouth but uh -huh, uh -huh, i knew this thing will not end well i knew it but when you came back i did not say anything no but in your heart you see your heart posture was a cry for justice, for evil, for whatever, rather than mercy and favor. You see, so in your hearts that way, and you've not dealt with that, and rather you are standing here and saying, Father, Father, eh, this and that too. 
this and that. There is a conflict between your inner desires and what you are saying with your mouth. And Father invites you and I today. He said that, wash, you know, get rid of all of those things. Anything that is contrary, get rid of it. But the one that aligns to mercy more than sacrifice, you know, I like mercy. The one that, that aligns with my spirit, your desires that are inside you, that aligns with my word. Oh, don't change it because of fear. Don't change it because of whatever, but rather look at the, the guidelines I've given you in my word so that you will be confident that I will surely give you the desires of your heart. Because you will come to me according to my will. You see, you will come to me according to my will. Could I ask you to take a moment, just pause and ponder. There's a few, quite a number of things God has touched on for us. He's spoken to us about the commitment he made of his own free will that his children, when you ask, you should receive. And he repeated it uh, so many times that you can't even think he was making a mistake. He said it enough times for you to know he's serious about it. Then he's also told us that that's how he wants you and I to walk. That should be the testimony of my life. Like, like the way Martha said it to Jesus, my children should say it to me. Myself should say it to myself. My life should testify that even now, whatever I ask of the Father, I know I'll get it. My life should testify that the word of God is true. He's spoken to us about that. He's also spoken to us about the fact that, look, you, with the word of God and the spirit of God, you have the ability to deal with virtually. Like, I don't know what the limits are, but you can deal with any matter whatsoever and get your results. If you know what his will is and how. He says things should be done. And if you believe him, sometimes you don't believe him. So you go and rent lawyers who you believe will believe him. So they should pray on your behalf. But your own belief could as well hamper the prayers. So why don't you rather come into believing God's word for the situation yourself and know how to walk in answered prayer so that you can collect the thing. Because Elijah was a man subject to like passions, like you, Pepe. But in your case, you are greater than Elijah. Fortunately or unfortunately, in your case, you are greater than Elijah. So what are you doing sitting on your tail and calling for lawyers to come and pray on your behalf? And he said, don't be impressed by the voice and the articulation and the, and the, and the words and the vocabulary and whatever. The people are not pretending, they are genuinely praying. It's just that they've been talking a lot, so their voices have become some way, they are used to praying that way. That is just the way that they are communicating with their God, allow them. But don't let that be your yardstick, where it feels as if that is what breaks things, barriers down, and that is what changes things. It is not true. Your soft voice like that, Father says, hey, it's not a voice matter, just my word, and you believe, and let's go, right? So he's spoken to us on all these things. I don't know which part is yours. And he's, he's spoken to us also about the desires of our hearts and the alignment between your heart and your mouth in prayer. That your eye will be single that you will not allow fear or any other thing to cause you to distort what the good things, the spiritual things, the wonderful things that are desired by your spirit, that God has put in your spirit to desire. Please, as for me, I'll be also humming here. Don't worry about that one. Just ponder whatever the Lord will have you ponder and then speak to your father. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for you are so good. Thank you, God. We are those who are called to walk the walk and the life of answered prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to your holy name forever. We are so grateful because you are good and you love us and you want us, Father, to, to, to just see your glory and to glorify you, that our joy may be full. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear sisters, God bless you. I would remind you the recording will be posted on the WhatsApp page tomorrow morning by God's grace. And you, you should also have access to the past recordings of the prayer school, the Lord's prayer school. I pray that as you listen again and again, the Lord will lay his finger each time on exactly what he needs to do for you, like what you need highlighted, okay? Ponder over it, learn, and change. Change, when you learn it, shift. 
Don't, I mean, learn it and, and leave it. Learn it and change. And hold on to what he has taught you. Don't let it drop. Hold on to it. God is faithful. He hasn't started lying. Has no intention of beginning the, a lying career. He will not start anytime soon, ever. We can trust him. We can believe him. He is the truth. He is God. He is good. He is good. Very generous. A very, very generous God. Very generous. Very good and kind. That's your father. That's my father. And he's teaching us. Don't worry. Follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. He may point out more things. I desire that he points out more things to you beyond whatever it is that you're listening to so that we may grow quickly. We may stand in the strength of God. Can you imagine the power that, that, that makes available when you are standing in confidence in your corner, in your home, in your bedroom, and I'm standing in confidence before my God in my bedroom, in my bathroom, in my washroom. Ah, what is it that the Spirit of God cannot put on your heart, cannot put on my heart, cannot bring to pass? What? It's time to arise. It's time to stand to your full height in Christ by the power of the Spirit of God. Believe the word of God and act on it. Never anymore look down on yourself as if you're a second-rate citizen of heaven. That you, dear, you don't know nothing. You don't know how to. You don't know what to do. Your prayers are not yet powerful. When you when you develop into a bishopess, that one, your prayers will now receive vibrations. Please, please, please. Where you are, you are a child of God. That's the qualification that is needed. The righteousness that is required for answered prayer is provided by the blood of the Lamb of God, with which all of us are cleansed. Okay, so please let us unashamedly, with gratitude in our hearts, with joy, come to our Father, knowing that if I ask Him, Oh, if I only ask him anything I like according to his will, he hears me. I know it. And if I know that he hears me, whatever I, I, I ask, I have it. I have it. And I give glory to God for it. I give glory to God for it. God bless you. Now we will move into prayer. There is time to pray for husbands. I would encourage you to stay and pray if you can. If you need to go and come back, it's fine. And I encourage you, pray for husbands, please. Eh? Pray for husbands. Pray for your husband. I remember those days. I didn't pray for my husband. But complaints, pa. Hey, I had complaints. Papa, he's not doing this. He's not doing that. He's not like this. He's not like that. But see, I wasn't praying for him. Who do you think was praying for him? Uh, so well, should I have expected anything different? <laughs> ah, God is merciful, Charlie. Please, let's pray for husbands. Let's pray for all those in authority. You don't pray for them and you are shouting, why is the economy, why is the this, why is the organization, why is the, you, your prayers, you see, but you pray for them. And when you pray, you know that God hears you. So you know something is happening. It changes your tone. It changes your engagement. So please, Pray for those in authority. Pray for your husband. Pray for husband. Pray for your boss. Pray for those in authority in your life and around you. The spirit of God will lead you. So I hand over to Sister Bridget. And uh, God willing, next week, Friday, 6 p.m., we will meet again and, and, and study whatever it is that the Lord will have us study at the Lord's Prayer School. God richly bless you so much. Sister Bridget, please, God bless you. Over to you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you very much. Good evening, 